Well guys, it's been six months since I had my Dandelion geothermal system installed. I have a lot of data. Spring seems to finally be here. Let's take a look. Before we go over the data, let's take a look at what I had to do in preparation for the system to be installed and what the system actually came with. I have wanted a geothermal system for years. It's been part of our energy independence plan for over a decade. When Kate and I were looking to buy houses eight years ago, we knew we had to find a house that we could execute on that plan. And we were happy to find after about a year of searching the home that we're in right now, where we could both execute on that plan and it was a great home for our family. The home did have one drawback though. It used an oil boiler and baseboard heating system and all of the geothermal systems I've seen have required a forced hot air system. Uh, so we knew that we were going to have to convert the home from the baseboard heat to having ductwork. Uh, we did, we got a bunch of contractors and quotes and ultimately we decided to go with a company called CNM Mechanical Heating and Cooling. Uh, within a week, they had both our upstairs and our downstairs retrofitted for ductwork. Uh, they had the drops in place so that way when the people from Dandelion would come along, they could just hook right up to it. And it was $6,500 for them to go ahead and do that. They did an excellent job, great craftsmanship. They always cleaned up after themselves. I couldn't recommend them more highly for anybody else who might need to do a retrofit for a geothermal system like this. Once that was done, the dandelion contractors would come in and do their thing. If you want, you can watch my prior videos on that install process to see how the whole process went. The contractors they hired were courteous and respectful. They did a great job of installing the system and didn't leave me with any mess that I had to clean up myself. The dandelion system included the 450 foot well to be drilled outside my house. Uh, that's where the ground loop was actually installed. The installation of the geothermal heat pump and a two zone system. A smart connected thermostat that can be controlled from the web or a smartphone, uh, which is something we'll look at a little bit later. And two new hot water heaters. One is a traditionally connected electric hot water heater. The second acts as a preheater for the first. The geothermal heat pump passes extra heat from the heat pump to the preheater, bringing the water temperature up from ground temp. This results in the electric hot water heater not having to work as hard to get the hot water to the desired temperature, saving us about 30% on our hot water costs. Okay, now that we've seen the whole system, let's take a look at the web portal. Starting on the dashboard, we can see a overall system status. If there was anything wrong with the system, I would receive an email and a text message alerting me. And so would Aztec Geothermal, the contractor that installed the system. Next, we can see that I purchased a dual zone option on my system, a $3,500 addition, allowing me to set my living area to a comfortable 70 degrees and my mother-in-law can set her apartment to 68. Chilly for me, but comfortable for her. Under the overall status, a real-time status is displayed for the system. Here you can see supply and return air temperature, the current ground loop temp, as well as real-time electrical usage. Selecting thermostat allows me to remotely control both the zones. I can set the temperature, the mode such as heat or cool, and the fan mode. In general, you should use a set it and forget it mentality for your geothermal system. We have all been taught to set our temperature lower at night, but the experts at Aztec recommend choosing a comfortable temperature and leaving it there consistently. WF Energy allows you to review how much energy your heat pump has been using, and this is where we will start digging into some data. This winter has been cold with a few oddly warm days mixed in. 
Typically, we spend $1,800 per year on oil and furnace maintenance, though I'm not sure that would have carried us through this year. Here's what our winter has looked like from a cost perspective. November costs $114, December $182, January $195, February $123, March $123, and April $87. This brings my total winter heating bill to $736, a savings of $1,064 if that $1,800 would have been enough for this winter, which I'm not sure it would have been given how this cold has carried into April. In addition, we actually had our temperature set to 70 all winter and 72 throughout April. With the oil base system, it never went above 67 and was set to 65 at night. So the house was warmer and we still had saved a significant amount of money. The amounts here are based on a 13 cent per kilowatt hour rate. That's the current rate here in upstate New York. I do have solar to offset my usage, which I purchased at 5.5 cents a kilowatt hour. So while my winter heating bill is $736 at the current rate, I'm actually only paying 312 due to the solar rays I have installed. I love my system. It's been a great savings and I did not miss the days of calling around to a local delivery company to find the best deal on oil or making emergency runs with five gallon tanks to get by for a few more days. There was one issue that we had this year. The air in the house is drier than we are used to. There is an option for a whole house humidifier but we opted not to get it. Next year we have a choice to make. We can have the humidifier added, which will integrate into the system with controls on the web and thermostat, or we can make our house more efficient. By making the house more efficient, there will be less heat exchange with the outside air. Less heat exchange means less loss of humidity, as well as an even more efficient system. I think I'm gonna go the route of making my house more efficient. Insulation in the attic, as well as new doors because I can currently feel air blowing in from outside during the winter will go a long way towards that. We are really looking forward to the summer. In addition to getting a brand new furnace and hot water tanks out of the deal, we are also getting central air. Central air is a luxury I've never had and it's something I am very much looking forward to. It'll be so nice working from my office not sweating while I do so. I have relented and put in window AC units in the past, but they're expensive. The geo system is so efficient, especially when it comes to AC, I won't ever be skipping on summertime comfort again. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you're interested in a dandelion system, you can visit dandelionenergy.com for more information. I'll link it to it in the description below. Um, thank you and stay comfortable.